Hey, you remember this candle? We made it a few weeks ago on the channel and uh, it was poured solid in wax. And we made it using this mold. Now this is a one piece cut mold and it's designed for casting solid objects. But the question is, can we put this on a rotation machine and make hollow castings? Let's find out. I have the cradle all built for this piece and I saved you guys the trouble of watching me cut out blocks of wood on the table saw. I think what's more interesting than sawing wood is understanding kind of the philosophy of how to make a cradle. This mold is big and heavy and when it sets into this cradle, it's got to be able to support it as it spins in space. And the most important thing about that, by far, is making sure that the whole thing is balanced. Because if it's not balanced, it's just not going to work. This frame can actually carry a substantial amount of weight, a surprising amount of weight, but it has to be well balanced. And one of the things that has to happen is it has to be the middle, the center line is about here of the, of the rotation, of the main rotation. This is about in the center and it hits right in about the center of the mass of the mold. And the mold obviously is the heaviest part. The cradle itself, this thin piece of wood and these blocks, they don't amount to much in terms of, you know, added weight. So then I have these stanchions here that swivel into place like that and they're then just simply tightened down. And uh, they, that actually has proven to be surprisingly effective. The piece is held pretty well by these four uprights. And to hold the thing from falling out of the mold once it's flipped over, just using this is piece of old flooring. Because it's got finish and spray release on it, put that on there like that. And the whole thing is just held in place with a couple of C-clamps. And I can put these C-clamps on quick, pour the, pour the shot of resin in, pop these C-clamps on quick, and you notice I'm putting them on opposite sides. And there again, that's all just about balance. And I can always tighten it up just a little bit with finger pressure, and that holds in surprisingly well. So now we are ready to go. It's pretty well balanced. I took two C-clamps on this side, to help with the counterbalance. So there's a little more weight here to counterbalance the weight on the other side. But as a general rule, this thing is rotating really nice in both directions. I mean, look at that. The thing about it is, yeah, this thing's pretty heavy, but if it's balanced, it doesn't matter how heavy it is. This frame can carry a lot of weight as long as the weight is neatly balanced. And remember in rotational molding, you're not spinning at high speeds. This thing's not going to be whipping around at 800 RPM. I, <laughs> I wouldn't be in the same room with it. If it was whipping around at high speed, the thing would fly apart. It's completely unnecessary. And contrary to all the comments I get where people go, oh, you have to spin it really fast because it's centrifugal force. And that's what, uh-uh. It's not centrifugal force. That's 100% wrong. So just remember when you're building your rotational machine, it's all about balancing. But the balancing you kind of do at the end. Yeah, you do it in the design of it, but you also kind of do it at the end where you can attach clamps or you can attach weights. You can attach all kinds of stuff and then you just test. And if it rotates like that with hardly any effort at all, your machine is balanced and you are ready to go. Whenever I'm mixing resin, I don't like to dispense them out of these giant jugs. So I like to dispense resin out of cups. So I just pour in a small amount in the cup. Here's a tip. Don't overfill the cup. Put a small amount of resin in a bigger cup and you have more control over how you pour it. Let's put some dye into the B side, some pigment. This pigment is the world's nastiest stuff, but it does work. That's probably enough. Oh yeah, now it's gonna look nice and black in the cup, <laughs> but it's gonna be gray in real life because when you mix resin, it's much darker and much richer color uh, in the uncured form than it is in the cured form. All right, let's mix some resin. Got our A, our A side and our B side ready to go. This is a pretty healthy shot. We don't have a lot of time to fool around. So let's shoot this thing, see what we get. Should be able to put this on in good order. Finger pressure tight, nice, let's spin it. 
No time like the present. Let's spin it. You don't need speed. What you need is random. You go in all directions. What you're just trying to do is put enough resin to coat all the walls evenly and not have it pool up anywhere. That's all you want to do. You just want the resin flowing around and as it slowly gels, it's got a nice even coating on the inside. That's all there is to this trick. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this until it's time, till the witness cup tells us it's time that we're done. It's starting to gel, but it's still not gel. I'm going to keep going and uh, I'll come back to you when this first shot is ready and cured. Let's see what's happening in here. Very curious. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's cured up. It's looking good. Exciting, let's see what we got. Now this is our the first shot. So this is only a third of the amount of resin that I would normally pour into one of these. But I'm gonna use this as our clean out. And what I mean by that is, uh, we cast wax in here before, white wax, and I suspect that there's going to be little chips of wax stuck in this resin. I don't know that I got it 100% clean, but also this will let us inspect to see if we're going to catch bubbles and if we need to do any pre-painting. So uh, this is going to teach us a lot, this little demold here. Let's see how we go. Let's see how it goes. Remember, this is only 60 grams of resin that went into this. Not very much. A little bit. All right. It came right out. Ooh. All right. All right. Yeah, I caught, I caught, I'm catching some small bubbles in the hair. That's not a surprise to me. Face cast just pretty much perfectly. Boy, that's not bad. I think we're going to need to pre-brush the hair with each cycle, just especially around the front part of the hair, and push the resin into there. But boy, other than that, not bad. I cut him open. And the reason that I cut him open was I wanted you to see, number one, this is what I'm talking about. We, sh we put 60 grams, which is just like a quarter of a cup of resin, and what we got was an even thin walled coating throughout the entire casting, both sides. Look at that. Look at, there's no big giant lumps, no big pools of resin. That's exactly what you wanna see. That's precisely what you wanna see. Just enough resin to do a nice even coat. However, if you look at the deepest parts, the deepest crevices, way back inside the recesses of the piece, that's going to be the thinnest part of the resin. That's where the resin is going to run away from it. And you can kind of see it, but I'm going to get a light out here. Let me set up and let's get a light on this. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, now you can really see. See, the, see all the bright spots in there? Those are the deepest parts. Let's look at the front side view. There you really see them. See the deepest, darkest cracks and crevices on that face? Well, look how thin they are. The light just glows through the resin in those areas. And that's why you have to do multiple shots. When people tell you, oh no, you have to spin resin at a very high speed and it's centrifugal force that holds it against the walls, you don't want that because what happens if you did spin it at high speed, you would push the resin even deeper all of the resin would pool in the, in, the, in the deepest, highest parts, and it would pull away from the walls. That's exactly what you don't want. What you want is you want the resin flowing evenly and gently all over the thing. And in two successive coats, we would build those up so that all of those high spots, they would still be the thinnest spots in the casting, but they would be thick enough to be strong. And I think that is as vivid and as clear a way as I can make the point. You need to make multiple pours of resin, putting just enough resin in 
so that it coats the mold evenly and perfectly and you just do it in multiple shots. If you put a big shot of resin in there, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a glob of, of resin flowing around. Even though the walls are coated, you're gonna have all this extra resin pooling into a ball. And as it cures, it's gonna gel into a ball. And then it's gonna gel into a sticky round ball. And then it's gonna roll around on the inside and it's gonna peel all the resin away from the walls. And it's gonna make a gigantic, enormous, ridiculous mess. It doesn't work. But now you just see it vividly here. This is how you make rotation casting work. Now, we have bubbles and lots of them. And unfortunately, I expected those bubbles to be there because it's very, very hard for rotation to push. There's no pressure that pushes the air out of, the, of these kinds of fine areas that can easily trap bubbles. So the way around that is we're going to have to do a pre-paint and we're gonna mechanically force the resin down into those deep areas. Alrighty, I mixed up a small batch of resin. Beautiful. Okay. Very cheap brush, just about the cheapest brush on the planet. And let's go in here like this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dump some in there. I'm just gonna drizzle some in there, is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna make sure and it just gets forced into all those cracks down there. See what I'm doing? I'm just forcing it into the deepest parts and making sure that it's not going to catch bubbles. The deepest parts are where the bubbles are gonna lay and that's where the resin is now pooled into. So we're gonna close the mold like that, kind of prop it up into position. I'm gonna get the mold closed we want that resin, we want this resin to gel. It doesn't have to harden, it's already getting warm. We want it to gel. Now you might be asking me about the brush. Is the brush ruined? No, because I have acetone handy and I can just clean the brush with acetone. That's by the way, when you do that, it's really nice. All the acetone goes up into the atmosphere and into your lungs and into your tissues and uh, it's uh, probably pretty deadly. But anyway, you can, Clean the brush very nicely with acetone. Let's see how we're doing here with our kit here. Oh yeah, it's gelling up nice. It's gelling up good. Okay, excellent. So we are done. We're gonna rubber band this and pop it into the mold. Let's get busy and get the uh, rotator back up on the table. Get this thing rubber banded and we'll cast the last shot. I mixed up a 60 gram batch, first shot. So I just need to stir, 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 stir like a crazy man. We don't have a lot of time because we want to get this thing spinning. That's good enough. That'll work. Let's dump it. And the great thing is we don't have to take time dumping. That's nice and snug. Let her rip, Bob. <laughs> Let her rip. You see, I'm working in every direction, back and forth, forwards and backwards. Never going fast. No need. What I want to do is just Coat that inside mold. Just coat it evenly. And then it'll stay up on the walls coated just because it gels. You know, it turns into, it starts out about milk, turns into maple syrup, then it turns into honey, and then it turns into jelly, then it turns into leather, and then it turns into rock hard after a while. So you can see I'm putting very, very little force on this tool, on this machine. Just easy peasy, spin that thing around. And you just keep going until the thing gels. And how you know it's re you're ready, of course, is your witness cup. I keep an eye on the cup and it's still, uh, it's now I'm gonna call it uh, it's pretty close to the honey stage. It's still flowing. It's still flowing, so it's still important that we keep it moving in all different directions because it's still flowing evenly and all the way around. As soon as the thing is gelled, uh, you can stop spinning. You don't have to spin forever. You just have to spin till it no longer flows. Once the resin has coated the walls of the mold, you're golden.
and it's just about to the point now where it's starting to really change color. It's still sagging. It's now at the point where if I let it sag, it would drip and kind of form sags, but it's very close to where we're done with the first shot. I did two more shots, so there are three in here now, so it should be ready to go. Let's get this thing off of here. Looking good. I'll swivel this thing off. That should bring that out of the way. That should might be enough. Yeah, it is. All right, good. Okie dokie. All right, let's look at this thing. Looking pretty good. See what we got. This is the fun part. This is always the fun part. See what we got. See what pops out of the mold. <laughs> let's see. Okay, clear the desk, make it official. Let's pop this open. Come on. Come along. Come on, baby. See what we got. Ooh. Uh, yeah, a couple tiny little bubbles in the back. Got to do a full evaluation here. See what we got going on. All right. How'd we do? How'd we do? Hmm. Well, we caught some flash in here, but I know why. But it just pulled right out. Um, not bad. Parting line isn't as good as I would like right here. Tell you what, I'm going to move you in closer so you can see everything there is to be seen. I'm close and in personal because I want you to see exactly how the thing came out. So let's do that. Let me reset up the cameras and I will uh, come back to you. All right, let's take a close up and personal look at how we did here. Generally speaking, it does not look bad. We have a tiny bit of flash. Let's uh, get a look at some flash take off. I mean, this is just like, this is paper thin flash, it's nothing flash. A little more flash around the base, but this is all gonna have to be sanded off. So that's nothing. Did get a little bit of cleanup required here and here, not a big deal. Uh, I don't love this parting line. You can see it. Can you guys get up there and see that parting line right there? It's a little more parting line than I'd like to see. It's not going to be terribly hard to clean, but it's still a cleanup job. Otherwise, the parting line is pretty nice. Very minimal cleanup here. Uh, same over here. It's a little micro flash. But I don't think it's going to be hard to clean. Nope. Pretty level. I can feel a little tiny bit, but really pretty minimal. That's about as minimal a parting line as you can expect. That's really easy to clean. Here it's a little more work, and there's some work over the ridges. But also, you see the original parting line from the other guy's casting is still in there. Those bubbles are not mine. They were in the part itself. Now, bubbles. We did catch some bubbles, but despite my pre-painting, I caught some... I did catch a few bubbles here, here. Tiny, tiny bubble there. Little bubble there. So it's not bubble-free. It's not terrible. It's not going to take forever to clean up. Um, this sanding business, all of this weird sanding business is where they just sanded off the parting line. Uh, and the original sculpture. So, otherwise, uh, all in all, not bad. We do have some minor cleanup, but I'm pretty pleased. And nice lightweight, but clearly thick enough. This is a 200 gram batch, uh, clearly strong, no weak spots. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this. This worked out really well. I'm gonna call old Dave a success. <laughs> if you like this video, watch this video next. I appreciate you being here. We just passed 25,000 subscribers, which blows my mind. And it's all because of you guys. And uh, I just uh, really do believe, and I'm not just saying this to kiss up, although I am, uh, that I have the best community on YouTube. You guys are fantastic. And uh, you're the whole reason this channel's here. And I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.